Welcome to Business Mentorship Keeping It Real, where we feature entrepreneurs and enterprise leaders who participate in our guest blog. Our guest is Tina Kadish, a coach, an author, and a speaker working with female entrepreneurs. We're going to discuss how she helps women find their freedom and transition from a J-O-B to self-employment. And Tina joins us from Danbury, Connecticut. Welcome. Thank you so much, Trish, for having me here today. I'm so excited you to know, share my I, story. There is just so many synergies, I think, between what you're doing and the Share Your Stories community, because I thought maybe we could talk a little bit about some of the statistical similarities, like 90% of the people who share their stories in our platform have been a corporate leader who have transitioned to business owner. And of course, your specialty is working with women who are doing exactly the same thing. So is there is there some commonality amongst the women that you work with that makes them take that leap from the J-O-B to self-employment? Yes. You know, something that I have found, you know, my journey began uh, when I was laid off from the corporate world and I really got a taste of freedom mm. and I wanted to really figure out what did I want to do with my career. And I was happy, you know, with what I was doing. I was in training and development. So what I have found is that uh, women may be happy with what they're doing in terms of their profession, but they're not happy with going to a J-O-B every day. So I would say over 80% of women, and I think it's even higher today, today especially, that women are just finding themselves stuck. They're unhappy. Mm -hmm. They're unfulfilled with where they're going. They don't want to go to a building anymore. And I, and I think the pandemic really amplified that that women sure. realize and even men it's not just women that don't want to go to a job right and be told what to do they're, they're not they want to be in control they want to be in the driver's seat and so that's for me i believe as an entrepreneur i'm the ceo of my life so i would have to say that a large percentage of individuals need that clarity that direction to figure out what they want to do because we go from job to job, and we're not really reflecting and thinking about what is our why? Like, what do we want to do? So true. Yeah, that's so true. And you know, I have to, I, I can certainly commiserate because I'm celebrating 30 years as an entrepreneur this year. So, uh, and yeah, and when, and you're absolutely right. I mean, I love your statement, CEO of my own life. I never thought of it that way before, you know? We are. Because we are, we are absolutely. And, and is there an age group? Like, do you find, is it like 30s, 40s, 50s? Does there seem to be an age group where they go, oh, okay, enough. I've kind of, I built my skills. I've got my tool chest full of, uh, you know, opportunities. I've, I've cut my, my teeth in various different positions. And now I'm really ready to try something on my own. I would say my, my you know, what I found is 40s plus, but even, you know, in their 30s, well, they're still doing their figuring job it out, and all right? figuring it out. But I would say 40 plus and maybe more in the 50s, because what happens a lot of times is women that are going through a divorce. Mm. Um, they're looking to reinvent themselves. Yep, absolutely. They've done a career for a long time. They've done everything for their kids. Now, now they're empty nesters. And this is what I have found too. Right. women that are empty nesters are saying, I've done everything for my kids, mm -hmm. my family. It's now time for me. Me, exactly. So is it, do this, does it start as a side hustle? Because that's always the interest level, you know? I think, listen, especially when you're a woman on your own and you're responsible for the bills and, you know, your family, you, you know, making that transition from a steady paycheck to that unfamiliar territory is huge leap of faith. It so do, do folks start a side hustle first? And then once that side hustle starts to gain traction, then they create confidence and go, okay, now I'm ready. They do. And that was me because when I, you know, got laid off, I did, you know, start my business part-time. And because of, you know, a lot of times we have those, the head trash and that whole, I can't do this. Uh, how am I going to make a business out of this? Who's going to pay me? Like all of those thoughts go in our, in our mind. It right. all begins in our mindset. And so many women, yes, they do start it as a side hustle. You know, I always tell people, what is your passion? So you can follow your passion, do it part-time. 
Right. But do do something that you love to do. Who knows? It can turn into a career. Right. right. You know, because I did that, you know, for six years, I was building my business part time and while working full time because I did go to a, a job as a recruiter mm -hmm. and I stayed there for 11 years until 2018. So I've been a full time entrepreneur since 2018. So it's been five years. And I got to tell you, going back to a job. And then making that transition from employee to entrepreneur, oh no, like I have to make it happen right. and you will make it happen. However, making that, taking that leap, you have to have a plan, right? You really got to put a step-by-step -step plan. Like, how am I going to achieve this? You know, and I, and this is where I coach my clients on is creating a plan, an exit strategy to make this happen. Mm -hmm. putting a plan together. Like I created an emergency fund, a cushion that I had money that I said, you know, when I start my business full time, when I'm in my business full time, I'm going to have a cushion. And as I'm building and creating traction and getting those clients, I want to have that cushion. And I did. And so I always tell people while you're working, create an emergency fund, uh, hire a coach, you know, work with someone that can get you in that direction because we try to do it all on our own mm -hmm. and we're trying to figure it out and we don't even know if we're doing it right that's so true you know because entrepreneurship is really lonely right i mean it especially is lonely. you know when you're in when you're in your corporate environment you've got colleagues you can meet them at the water cooler you know you can call them up and say listen i've got a great idea what do you think uh, but when you're on your own, you kind of, you know, I used to say I had the smartest plants in the neighborhood because I would literally have conversations with myself because you need to hear it out loud, right? You I mean, you have these wonderful thoughts, but to verbalize it almost makes it real. So I would have these conversations with myself when I first started because I was like, <laughs> okay, what does that sound like? No, no, that doesn't sound good. Maybe we need to tweak this or maybe we need to tweak that. So you need somebody to bounce the ideas off of. So I love the, the your reference to finding a coach because the coach can actually hear what you've got to say, can provide a little bit of their own personal experience, but can also tag in and give you that little bit of extra confidence, right? Absolutely. They hold you accountable. They, right. You can bounce ideas with them. You have that support, that guidance. And not only working with the coach, but surrounding yourself in a community. Right where there's other women, you know, that you can connect with and share your ideas, share your, your challenges, because you're going to have challenges in entrepreneur. Okay. Absolutely. Life in general, you know, there's challenges in your, in your job, there's challenges as an entrepreneur, yep. but I always tell people whenever you're going through those ups and downs, always go back to your why, what, why am I doing this? What is it that really fuels me? Why, so what impact do I want to make? Well, and you me? know, I also love your reference to your passion because I don't know about you, but we all do post-secondary education, whether it's, you know, college or university or maybe even just certificate programs. But very rarely do we find a direct connection between, you know, getting that uh, degree in geography and then going out into the world and, and doing what exactly, Right. Because I don't think we really connect the dots when we're that young. You know, we have we have a passion or an interest, but we don't know how that's going to be able to translate from an interest level to cash in the bank account, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, because um, when I think about my background, <coughs> I was an admin assistant. I went to, I didn't go to college right out of high school. I went to business school, a secretarial school back in the day. Yeah. And when I realized I was at the top of being an admin, I said, what do I do now? So I went to college later in life and got my degree in business with the concentration in marketing. And I really wanted to get into the marketing, you know, working for a company in the marketing department. But however, not realizing when I got laid off, I got the taste of freedom. Mm. And I said, you know, and, and I, and I, um, there's a tool that I now coach my clients on finding your passion that I found my passion was to be an entrepreneur, helping other women find their passion. So tell us a little bit about this passion test, because okay. you shared that with us in the in the guest blog. And I was reading that. That certainly piqued my interest because I was like, hmm. So you mean there's something that can help me identify the path that I should take? So yes. tell us a little bit about the passion test. Yes. And how I got introduced to it is through networking. I was at a networking group. I met this woman who was a certified passion test facilitator. 
And she shared with me that this tool, you know, I didn't create this tool. It was created by Janet Atwood. She's the one that created this. She has a book called The Passion Test. And it's all about finding your, what are your top five things that you want to focus on that really lights you up? And there's a formula, you know, to this. The first one is intention, living a life with intention. Every so day. true, so true, right? We, it's it's our yeah. purpose. Right? What are you getting up in the morning for? Exactly. What are your intentions every day? Okay. And so we teach that in this with this tool. What are your intentions? What do you want to create in your life? And then the second is attention. What you focus on expands. Where are you putting your energy? Okay. Wherever you're putting your energy, it flows. So true. Okay? So and true. and then the third one, the third one is is no tension, meaning letting go, because a lot of times we want to attach to the outcome. And what this tool I help my co clients with is you got to let go, but you'd be open to the possibilities. Don't worry about the how, but so however, take a, taking action. Isn't so that this the hardest tool, thing to do? It is the hardest thing to do is taking action because people think, well, you know, I've got my goals. I have a vision. However, what action are you taking? Because every day you got to take action because nothing's going to change. Yeah, Nothing's going to change if you don't take action. Yeah, you need Even those little baby little steps. steps. Yeah, you need the baby, baby steps. Baby steps. Yeah. You need the baby steps. So this tool really gives you clarity on what you want to do. So it's part of one of my programs to get clear with your career. Because, but I start with the foundation of figuring out your why. What is your why? Finding your why. And this tool really gives you really that whole clarity that we all need. And that's what's really missing for a lot of us is that clarity piece. You know, it's so true because as we transition from various different things in life, you know, like the people that we are when we get our first J-O-B and our, maybe you're a teenager or maybe you're in your 20s, you're certainly not that same, same person as the decades go by, right? Our needs no. change, our wants change, our interests change. So why can't we change the career too? Because there's, you know, as you mature, so should the interest level and the outcome of your career be. So I think that's a really wonderful connection to make between the passion. And it's not just the passion for the rest of your life. It can be passion for a period of time. Absolutely. And we always recommend that you take this uh, test. Uh, and it's not a test where you're actually answering questions. It is a process of facilitation. I go through an exercise with you and we do some other exercises to really get you that clarity that you need. And, you know, and we always recommend doing it twice a year because you're right, Trish, our wants change, our needs change. Our, there's times in our life we change. Like we might be right now in our 60s. It's a big difference than when we were in our 40s. Oh, so true. That's so true. And it'll be different when we're in our 70s. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because yeah. life doesn't end until our life is over. Right. And right. You know, until and we, we decide. Going, right. Until we decide. And yeah. every day is waking up with intention. So every day, set your intentions of what you want to create, because we are the ones that are setting the intention. So tell me a little bit about freedom, because I'm going to share with you, you know, one of the things that we've done in the Share Your Stories communities, when we get together at our own quarterly networking events, is we ask people to share a word. So what's your word for this week or this month or this quarter? And one of the words that's come up again and again mm. and again is freedom. Mm. And freedom means different things to different people. But if you're helping your clients find freedom, what seems to be the overwhelming uh, majority of what, what does freedom mean to your clients? Is it freedom of time? Freedom of it's, place? It is time. It is um, being able to do what you love to do every day. It's really being able to not be told what to do by somebody else. And that's what it was for me. And, the, you know, I wrote my book, Freedom, The Seven Steps to Thrive in Life and Business, because for me, when I got that taste of freedom, I'm like, I got to write a book about this. What does freedom mean to me? So I created my seven steps from what's worked for me. And I'll share them here, if you'd like, is because to me, freedom is seven things. It's faith. All right, get your get your notepad out, everybody. Everyone who's a viewing and listening audience, here's your here's seven awesome tips that you can take yeah. with you into the weekend. Okay, let's go. I'm yeah. ready. I'm writing okay. them down. 
Okay, so faith. F is for faith. Believing in there's a higher power. Whatever you believe in, it's believing in yourself. It's believing in something more that whatever you want to go out and achieve, it will happen. Having that belief. The R is release. Remember, I talked earlier about letting go. Here, it's releasing what happened in the past. Let those go and focus on right now. What is it that you want to create? All right. And so for me, that was really important for me because I had to release the doubt. I had to release the, um, the limiting beliefs around money because I had a scarcity mindset. Oh, that's a big one, isn't it? Oh, yes. Uh, all my life, I've always come from a scarcity mindset. And I talk about mindset in my book. The first E is evaluation. And what I mean by evaluation, evaluate your progress. You know, we all have achieved success. Don't discount everything you've done in the past. But let's look at the bigger picture and evaluate your progress. Evaluate where you've, what you've done, where you are today. You know, because everything you've done in the past have gotten you to where you are today. Yeah, Don't leads you to those. today. Yeah, leads you to today. Yeah. So evaluate that. Look at the bigger picture. The second E is energy. I talk about energy. What is your energy? Energy. Everything is energy. Money is energy. Physical, spiritual, emotional. Everything is energy. Where are you focusing on? Where are you putting your energy? Is so important because what you put out there is what you're going to get. Okay. The D is determination. Are you determined to make things happen? That no matter whether you have the ups and downs, you're weathering the ups and downs, you are determined to make it happen. Like I was determined to be a full-time entrepreneur when I was working my business part-time. I had had it. I was burnt out. I said, I've got to make this happen. And enough with the excuses. I was determined. Okay. The O is optimism. Having that optimistic attitude. All right. So it goes in line with determination. I'm optimistic. I'm going to get through this. I'm going to do it. Don't know how, but I'm going to make it happen. And I'm going to align myself with the right people, the community, people that support you. You got to align yourself with the right people. Okay. I'm talking too much. Got to <laughs> drink some water. The M is mindset. So I wrap it up with mindset because it does begin here. I didn't end it with money. If you notice the M is not money. Mm -hmm. It's mindset. What is your mindset today? There's two types of mindset. We have a growth mindset or we have a fixed mindset. Are you always focusing on the problem or are you looking at the solution to the problem, looking for alternatives, looking for options? And you're going to have that. Oh, how am I going to do this? Uh, how am I going to do this? How I, I got to find a way. I will find a way. It's Well, that's it's human so nature, right? Yeah, it's human nature. And as you're going through those ups and downs and you're determined, but things are going to go wrong. Things are going to go wrong. And having that mindset that I don't know what I'm, you know, I'm going to get through this. I'm going to take action because I talk about that in the book. You know, in my book, I talk about the imposter syndrome because we have all of those beliefs in ourselves. We believe that we can't do it. We, we lack that self-confidence, you know, a lot of women, that's what something that I really have seen a lot of is that they don't have the confidence and it's all of, you know, the stories that they've told themselves, the stories that have been told to them from other people that stops them in their tracks. So this process really helps them to overcome those barriers. It's doing the inner work. And, you know, I create, I have a course from this book called Success Incubator because you can achieve success. You can achieve freedom following these seven steps to get you to building that on to that building that business that you'd like to create. So I take them from the inner work to creating a business. That just sounds so I mean. logical, Tina. It sounds like, and I love that the, you know, you talk about freedom as an acronym with some very strategic and process driven ways to get to freedom. And yes. it all sounds so, so doable and it's achievable. And the positive energy that you give all of us, you know, I'm sitting here writing down and thinking about these steps and I'm thinking, you know, it's never too late to change your direction, right? Never too late. And, you know, this is the mindset too, because we get older because this is another thing I've seen with, you know, people that are older, 
I, it's too late for me now. Like, what am I going to do? Like, how am I going to make money following my passion? Right. I'm really not. I said, but are you doing anything right in your passion right yeah. now? You got to feel, you, know, you have to fuel the passion, right? You've got to feel the passion. Like I have a yeah. friend of mine right now. She's a mortgage lender. Now you know how the mortgage industry is going on right now. And she's going to need my services. She's now, she loves pets, dogs. She started a dog sitting business. Wow. How fantastic. She's making good money right now as a dog sitter. Wow. Let me tell you. See? And never she's say in never. Her 50s. She's in her 50s. And she said, Tina, I had to find a way. The mortgage industry right now is not good. Right. right. I'm not making money. And she's single. She's the breadwinner. Sometimes okay? we're forced, right? Yes. Sometimes we are forced. Yeah. And we really have to, we really have to, uh, we're in the drive, again, we're in the driver's seat. Yes. We have to take action here. Yeah. We have you know, to make a decision. Tina, I absolutely love our conversation because I think our viewing and listening audience is really going to resonate with anything is possible. You know, it, it, plant, it starts as a little seed. It starts as a great idea. You nurture it along the way. You find some people who can support you and help you push it into the direction that you want it to. And who knows where it may go, right? That's right. Who knows? Exploring the possibilities, being open to the possibilities. Yeah. And that's what I meant when I shared the formula of finding your passion is letting go, be open yeah. to the possibilities that anything is possible, but it begins right here. So true. That is just so true. Now, one of the things that we do in the guest blog is we share three words of advice. Now, we've had a wonderful conversation about one of the words in your advice, but I absolutely love yours, and it is find your freedom. So if there was one thing, one piece of advice that you could give to our viewing and listening audience that would help them find their freedom, what would it be? It's to believe in yourself that you can do it and go out there and make it happen. Make your dreams a reality because you know life is too short and you don't want to have the regrets. You want to live a life saying, you know what? I achieved that. It was hard, but I did it. So go out, make it happen because you deserve success. Well, thank you very much. That is such an, a wonderful way for us to end our conversation today and the connection that we've made with the folks that are listening or watching our discussion. And I really, really want to thank you for taking the time to share with us so many wonderful tidbits of information because I'm sure people took notes. Um, they'll go back and, you know, rewatch the video or listen to the podcast and they'll write down your freedom steps. And wouldn't it be great if we would hear from some of our viewing and listening audience in the weeks to come who've taken some of your practical advice and started on their own new journey. Thank you, Trish, for having me here today. So, so honored to be here. It's just been so fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'd like to thank you, our viewing and listening audience, for joining us today for this edition of Keeping It Real, where we introduce you to the person behind the logo. If you'd like to connect with our guest, you'll find Tina's contact information in the description portion below. I'm Trish Tonai, founder and host for the series. And if you're interested in sharing your business story, visit our website at shareyourstories.online and subscribe to our channel, Business Mentorship Keeping It Real. Thanks again for tuning in, and we look forward to meeting you next time when we share another great idea. Yeah.